Okay, in this video, in addition of checking what is going on in here in terms of technical analysis, I am going to talk about the fundamental analysis in Quant a bit more. Because as you can see, since the beginning of 2024, all the way up here, we had a very, very slow and steady downtrend. And I do get it. It is very, very frustrating. And this does make a lot of people mad, especially the ones who bought Quant all the way up here. And naturally, I am getting some very, very interesting comments. For example, they say Quant is cooked or Quant is a dead token. So in this video, as a reminder of why are we so optimistic in the mid to long term in Quant, I am going to talk about the fundamental analysis a little bit. And by the way, I'm not here to change your mind. Okay, if you fully believe that Quant is an absolutely worthless token, then you need to definitely close the video right now because what I'm about to tell you is definitely going to go against that. And again, if you are not a believer, I am not here to change your mind, okay? If you like Quant and you want to know a bit more about it and what does it do and where is its place in the crypto market equation, then feel free to watch the video. So with that said, hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you are having a great time with your family and loved ones. And this is going to be a bit of a special video because I'm going to try and explain why QNT is not a bad token, despite the fact that when you look at the chart, well, we have been on a very, very decent downtrend starting from all the way up here about, let's say, $150 to all the way down here around 50 bucks. Now, before that, I need you to understand that in the whole crypto market, we are pretty much at day zero. And you might say, well, okay, people know the crypto market for more than 10 years. Okay, that's absolutely fair enough. But the main point is adoption, okay? And let's not kid ourselves. I don't believe that at least at the moment we are having a whole lot of adoption taking in place. No, I think right now we are simply just at the beginning. And I just do not believe that we will see these prices in BTC and alts probably ever again. And with that said, let me give you an example and a comparison on how exactly the situation was at pretty much day zero in another industry. So I want to talk about mobile network challenges at day zero. You see, back in the day, at the beginning of the mobile networks, communication was definitely not as easy as is at the moment. We had back in the day, a lot of challenges communicating with each other for two very, very important reasons. Number one is going to be fragmentation. You see, back in the day, mobile networks were actually completely fragmented, meaning we had different standards. For example, GSM, I believe, was for US and CDMA was for mainly Europe and also some parts of Asia, making it very, very difficult for users to switch between networks. So for example, if you had a GSM standard device, basically you couldn't call me with a CDMA standard device. And each and every single provider was kind of operating in their own silo. And basically there was no unification between the networks. Now, back in the day, if you were very, very rich, you would usually buy a couple of devices with all the standards and then use each one of them to communicate with someone that their device was based on that specific standard. Other than this, there was pretty much no way to communicate with someone that has a device with a different standard than what yours is. This was the major, major problem back in the beginning days of mobile networks. Now, the second problem was actually proprietary systems. You see, back in the day, even if we were somehow, again, somehow able to unify the standards, there was another very, very important problem. And it was that every single standard basically had a very, very different system. And it's kind of like programming at the moment. For example, let's say a program is written using Java language. And can you operate that on a Python based compiler? The answer is unfortunately, absolutely not. You need to completely convert that Java program to a Python program. And basically you need to start from the beginning of the program and write it again. And then you can get an output on a Python based compiler. And back in the day, unfortunately for mobile networks, we had pretty much the same situation, which made it extremely, extremely hard to connect devices across different networks. And to be honest, 
definitely companies because of this were to blame at that point because they were trying to keep their users within their own ecosystem preventing them to use another device which was based on another standard so these were the two major problems back in the day for mobile networks until the roles of standards and connectivity came in clutch you see as we had mobile technology evolved global standards for example like gsm they unified the industry allowing for better connectivity and roaming across networks and naturally this led to seamless experience that we have at the moment now of course we have different standards gsm was for back in the day maybe like 10 to 15 years ago then we had lte which was for 4g and now in these days in a lot of countries we have 5g standards and who knows maybe even in the next couple of years you are going to see a new standard coming up but the point is that all of the mobile networks at the moment are completely unified and we do not have the complete mess that we had at the day zero of mobile networks and we can very very easily now switch between networks and roam globally so this was a major major leap in mobile networks technology now what are the similarities between mobile networks at day zero and the current situation on blockchain well let's compare them you see the first problem again even in the blockchain technology is going to be unfortunately fragmentation why is that because at the moment we have many many different blockchains for example we have btc ethereum solana ada avax and many many others that have their own protocols and ecosystems and this is again exactly like the early days in mobile networks the blockchains at the moment unfortunately are operating in pretty much their own silos meaning assets and especially especially data from a developer point of view cannot easily move between different networks why is that because number one it takes a lot of time and number two which i think is actually much much more important it is very very costly and expensive so in blockchain technology right now we are unfortunately having the fragmentation problem which is i think pretty much the most important issue now the second problem is going to be again proprietary systems because at the moment we are seeing that each blockchain is developed for their own specific purposes with different technical foundations which leads to unfortunately completely isolated ecosystems where as a developer for example you cannot design a program maybe on like icp's blockchain and run it on other blockchains as well this is at the moment unfortunately not possible and it is definitely a scalability problem also not from a developer point of view from a simple investor point of view moving assets or information between blockchains is unfortunately often a complicated and costly process as well which is really not ideal so you see in the blockchain technology at the moment which i believe is definitely at day zero we are having the same problems that we had back in the day for mobile networks now the main question in here is that well okay what is the solution for the blockchain technology you see that is when quants overledger technology comes in clutch because we absolutely 100 need a unification system and quants overledger technology is trying to play a role similar to what gsm back in the day did for mobile networks and the way that it works is absolutely fascinating because by providing a blockchain operating system that sits on top of existing blockchains overledger actually allows developers to build decentralized applications that can interact across multiple blockchain networks and again from a developer point of view this is so so important and this absolutely 100 solves the scalability issue and also it helps overcome the current fragmentation and makes interoperability possible now let's talk a bit more about quants overledger technology you see overledger basically works on two very very important bases number one is connecting different blockchains and it allows blockchains to communicate with one another facilitating the transfer of data and digital assets across different chains without the need for complex and expensive bridging system and again this is a very important point 
it's all about pretty much the cost and it's not just in blockchain technology absolutely not in every single industry whether they want to invent or maybe not even invent something at first they look at the cost and that's why in my opinion overledger technology is absolutely 100 necessary and useful now the second basis is avoiding solid system now this is again much much more important for a developer because for example earlier in the video i told you if i build an app on icp's blockchain basically i cannot use the app on another blockchain however using overledger developers can actually create applications that work across various blockchains breaking down the silos and solving the scalability problem this is again very very similar to how mobile technology evolved to allow every phone to work across different networks so in conclusion just as global standards in the mobile industry for example like gsm allowed for easier communication and the scaling quants overledger is helping to create standard protocols for cross-chain communication which will hopefully hopefully solve a major problem that we have at the moment in blockchain which is a scalability and again this could definitely help the blockchain space scale more and rapidly and attract much much more mainstream adoption and this is a very important point we need in the blockchain space much more adoption that we have at the moment right now again in my opinion we are absolutely 100 at day zero and you might be a knowledgeable person but i promise you you're not even one percent of the world that know about this i think in the next 10 years we are going to see blockchain technology explode and be a lot a lot more popular than it is at the moment and i fully believe that quants over ledger technology is going to definitely help this process so i said all these things to argue that in terms of fundamentals i just do not believe that we should be worried about quant and if you are a believer i hope you get something useful out of this video and if you're not a believer please please understand that i'm not here to change your mind okay you can right now close the video and just don't pay attention to anything that i say this is just for the people who believe in quant and want to know a bit more about what is actually bringing to the table and where is qnt's place in the crypto equation so i hope i explained it well now the important question is that do all these things are going to translate into price appreciation for qnt token and if it is going to do so do we have the right structures at the moment let's go on the live chart and see what is going on there because again i fully believe that in the mid to long term we are looking like a million bucks okay here we are on the live chart now at the beginning of the video i told you in the past year we were pretty much in a slow and steady downtrend but the question is that is this thing specific for quant or maybe in other altcoins we are having pretty much the same situation well let's check out some altcoins what about h bar there we go where is the beginning of the year it's actually right in here there we go as you can see from this point fair enough we did have a move up but what happened we got a huge move on the downside and when you just zoom out a bit more the story gets a bit more interesting because we are extremely extremely close to take the lowest low all the way down here about let's say three and a half cents from 2022 so h bar also has been in a complete downtrend what about let's say zcash as you can see we are having in here a move on the upside but when you zoom out a bit more as you can see we also have been in a very slow and steady downtrend what about let's say ethereum classic let's just zoom out a bit more okay this is also in a downtrend and for now we're not seeing any decent move on the upside and from this point we had about let's say a 60 percent move down to somewhere around the 19 bucks region what about litecoin well unfortunately in here we are having a slow and steady downtrend and what about polygon this is not slow and steady and it is unfortunately a very very strong downtrend and from a dollar and 20 cents we went all the way down here to somewhere around 35 cents which means well unfortunately 
in Polygon, we are in a much, much worse situation relative to Q and T. So you see, we do have a move down in Quant. That's absolutely fair enough, but it's not just specific for Q and T. In a lot of altcoins, we are having the same deal. And I just don't believe that we need to be worried about anything as is at the moment in Quant. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the future. You see, in the future, I told you I am extremely, extremely optimistic because, well, if you are a new viewer, I should tell you that I use Elliott Waves. And in terms of Elliott Waves, if you want to be bullish on any chart, you need to be able to find, regular viewers know it, a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 wave impulsive structure on the upside. This thing right in here is a normal 5 wave. The rules for it are, we shouldn't have overlapping of the waves between wave 2 and 4 and in any kind of impulsive structure, wave 3 right in here is not allowed to be the smallest wave and for sub waves, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 wave up into wave 1, 3, and 5. Let's just do this. There we go. And for wave 2 and 4, for our corrections, we can have different patterns. Let's say, sure. An ABC into 4 and a WXY into our wave 2. And again, if you can find this structure in Quant's price chart, then you can definitely be optimistic and bullish. Let's go on the live chart and count some pips. Let's zoom in more and see what is going on in this initial move operation here. And as you can see, we are having a very, very clear impulse on the upside with all the sub waves followed by that. We talked about this thing so, so many times. I fully believe that the current move down starting from the all time high around $440 is just a correction structure. And it might be like a WXY, maybe even an ABC if you are somehow able to find a 5 wave down in this area. But again, the main point is that this is a correction down. And on a high degree, we are going to have 5 wave up to about the all time high into wave 1. And then correction for wave 2. And this is the point. After our correction for wave 2 is over, I fully believe that in q &T, we are going to see a huge, huge move on the upside into wave 3, 4, 5. And just in this move, I promise you, we are going to set an all-time high and take the highest high all the way up here around $440. And we are absolutely not going to stop here. No, I think better targets can be somewhere around 800 to even $1,000. It's definitely, in my opinion, possible. Now, in a lot of charts, when I do this, tell me that I am an absolute moon boy and we're not going to have anything like this. Well, okay, here's a question. Why do you think that we're not going to have something like this? Because if you are not a believer on technical analysis, then okay, you have to be a believer on fundamental analysis. And in this video, I try to cover what quant does and why is it so, so essential for the blockchain? So if in terms of fundamentals, we are looking absolutely positive. And if in terms of technical analysis, the situation is pretty much the same and we are looking extremely bullish, then why are you saying that these targets are not possible? I just do not understand that. And another thing that I just don't get is that why are you focusing so much in the short term price action and why a move down in q t is bothering you so much if you are overall absolutely bullish if you're not a believer again i completely understand and i think you should definitely close the video and not watch this thing but if you are a believer shouldn't you really look at this move on the downside which i think might be our last move down as a very very strong buy opportunity and shouldn't you be happy it's just at the moment i am very very confused about why the people who are absolute believers in quant are worried so much if you are a believer you should treat these last moves on the downside as a solid buy opportunity and you shouldn't be worried about anything i just do not get it because after these moves are over again i fully believe that we are going to see a great great bull run in quant and also in a lot of other altcoins and in QNT, again, we are going to set an all time high, and this is going to be just the first target. And we're not going to stop at 450 bucks. And I think better targets, again, are going to be somewhere around $800 to about maybe a grand. It's definitely possible. So I hope I explained that well and I made my points about why 
I am so so bullish in Quant in terms of technical analysis and also fundamentals. And if you are a believer, well, I hope you are going to make a lot a lot of money in this pool. Now, if you are looking for some specialized contents, for example, you want me to check out some other cryptos and you want me to do a complete Elliott wave analysis on it or maybe you want to learn some decent technical analysis in order to be able to make good money in the markets you can become a member and ask me anything you want and until the next video i hope you're gonna have a great time with your family and loved ones goodbye